The morning sun shines on the gleaming hide of a muscular ranch horse. The aroma of bacon and coffee drifts from the wood cook stove at a cow camp. Silver spurs jingle as the men and women of the West get set for another day in the saddle. From the heart of Canada's finest ranching country, this is the Spirit of the West with rancher and horse trainer Hugh McLennan and his collection of music, poetry, and conversations with the folks who live and work with horses and cattle in the Spirit of the West. As I rode up through the smoke to a section of range up on the mountain behind our place, I was really enjoying how my horse felt good underneath me, and I thought about the the unsung heroes of the West, the working ranch horses who earn an honest living every day with the cowboy that trusts his life to that horse. And then I thought of some of the spectacular contract acts in rodeo of years gone by. How Rex Allen's Coco, billed as the wonder horse of the movies, would thrill the crowds with his tricks. And of course, Roy Rogers and Trigger. And today, you'll hear from some of the people who had a first-hand look at how these movie steeds got so good. And old Trigger, when things got quiet, he'd start to look around. You know, he'd say, now what are these guys dreaming up? That's the voice of William Whitney, who directed so many of those Republic movies with Roy and Trigger. And a little later, you'll hear the voice of Roy Rogers sharing a couple of amazing behind-the-scenes stories. And the great cement pour is what Baxter Black talks about today. The driver probably had seen cowboy projects before and anticipated excitement. Cattle markets and beef prices come up on the rangeland news. This would be two years in a row now that the consumer price index for beef will have declined. The Cowboy Poetry Spotlight features an old cowboy in a tribute to his horse. And we'll have another classic, Song of the West, with the story behind the song. And on the Irvin Saddles and Western Wear horse training file, why can one rider have trouble getting a horse to respond and another rider take the same horse and get along great? Dean Smith is an award-winning Hollywood stuntman, an Olympic medal winner, and a great horseman, and you'll hear from him after the Oklahoma Balladeer, Les Gillum. My memories consist of good and bad But I prefer to think about the good times that we had Though life was hard and often sometimes mean We found our joy in living upon the silver screen There was so little time for any fun Survival was a constant goal to get the work all done but now and then we acted out our dream We went to watch our heroes upon the silver screen I doubt if Mr. Autry really knew How much he made life bearable Heroes seldom do so here's to Roy and Rex and Tex, to Hoppy and to Gene. They brought us joy unspeakable upon the silver screen. And though those days are old, Memories of yesterday still linger till today. I never will forget just what they mean when we adored our heroes on the silver screen. I doubt if Mr. Autry really knew. brought us joy unspeakable upon the silver screen. They brought us joy unspeakable upon the silver screen. Oh, 
Boy, I really enjoy songs like that that uh, actually have something to say. You know, when we talk about movie horses, Rex Allen's famous Coco comes to mind, and here's award-winning stuntman Dean Smith. Did you uh, know old Rex pretty well? Well, I knew Rex very well. I tell you, I met, met Rex through Nudie, who was a rodeo tailor out there on Lancashire Boulevard in Hollywood. And uh, I just love Rex, and he lived there in Woodland Hills with me. And uh, his son, Rex Allen Jr., they're very good, very good friends of mine. And we just shared a lot of things, and uh, I'd go to a lot of rodeos with Rex. Of course, uh, Rex would probably do a rodeo, and then Dale Robertson would do a rodeo back there 40 years ago, and I was always with them. And uh, uh, I've been to Wilcox to honor him. Uh, I've been to his museum. I performed there at, in front of his museum there by the railroad tracks. Luckily, when I was performing, the, the trains didn't come through there. <laughs> Uh, but, what what takes place in a performance like that? Well, I, I have a high school trained horse that Glenn Randall, who was one of the great horse trainers, taught me a few things. And he, Glenn had taught, you know, he trained uh, Trigger and the Ben Her horses. He was cr probably the greatest horse trainer of all times. My horse, uh, I've had some great horses, and uh, I had a horse called Sunday. He was voted the cleverest horse in the movies. And generally, uh, I have another horse now called Hollywood. That's the uh, reason why I call him Hollywood. He's so doggone pretty. He's a big old stocking-legged paint horse. But they have a lot of tricks on them, and they're called high school edu educated horses. And uh, the horse that I have now is old Hollywood. And so when I go out in the arena, they'll introduce me and brag on me a little bit, and I'll come out right there and rare my old horse. And then I'll kneel him to the audience on either leg, and then I'll teach him how, I show him how they, how he bows. And then I'll get off of the horse and I'll ask him if he'll give everybody a great big smile. And he'll throw, up, throw his lip up and give everybody a smile. And then I asked him, well, how do you like the crowd? He'll say, yes, he likes it, but he doesn't like this hot weather we're having. And he'll shake his head no. And then I said, well, t tell me, Hollywood, how old are you? And he'll count out there about 14 years. And I said, now, Hollywood, are you telling me the truth? And old Hollywood would say, yes, I'm telling you to. And I'd chew him and I said, you're not lying about it. You're telling me the truth. And he said, yes. And then I'll get him to pick up my hat. And then I'll get him down on his knees and go out there and uh, put his head out like an old camel. Then he'll come back in with his head. Then he'll lay down and then he'll sit up like an old dog out there. Anyway, I'll jump up on the saddle and I'll take my hat off and I'll wave to the crowd. And uh, then, uh, not that I ever drank any or anything, but I've got a, a drunk thing on him. So where uh, I kind of staggers around there and I'll ha have him push me around and he'll push me around the arena. And uh, uh, but anyway, that's about what I do with old Hollywood. And the kids love it, and, and a lot of the old folks still do. And I think people still appreciate that. I'm probably one of the few people left that's got trick horse now yeah. you know uh, you don't see those contract acts like you no, used to and I'll tell you what it's a shame I just loved watching guys like Dick Griffin and Monty Montana and all these guys perform you know you don't realize now everything is so commercial so competitive uh, they're not putting that in the rodeo like they used to because they want to speed the show up and everything but all that being said, I've still got to say, if you ever watched the Thurston Gang, or you watched Nikki Flundra and her incredible trick riding, or watched Jonathan Field and his liberty work with his horses, uh, this kind of stuff is still going on. I'm so glad to see. Coming up, you'll hear Roy Rogers remembering one of the most beloved sidekicks of all, and there's an unforgettable song from Dan Roberts when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. I often think that if that uh, era of good old cowboy movies was still going on today, and by some quirk of fate, I got to have my own series with Lucky the Wonder Horse, who would play my sidekick? <laughs> well, there are lots of possibilities, but I think probably Baxter Black would be the one. Anyway, Gabby Hayes made over 65 movies with Roy Rogers, and Roy thought the world of Gabby. Uh, Gabby was like my brother and my buddy and my dad all wrapped up in one. We did 65 pictures together. So old Gabby, he, uh, we were doing a picture one time, and we had this big bear, and we're supposed to be in Central Park in the picture uh, in New York. Yeah. In New York for some reason, and uh, I don't remember the story, except 
uh, this particular one, part of it. And so um, Gabby had to uh, play with this bear, you know, <laughs> and uh, it was supposed to be his bear. And he said, I'm not going to mess with that bear. He, you know, Gabby, he was very opinionated. So when he thought of something was wrong, he wouldn't do it. So the guy that owned the bear, he says, oh, this, he was an Italian guy. I can't do much of it in Italian dialect, but he says, this bear says, he don't hurt nobody. I raised him from a little teeny baby. He says, watch this. He says, kush papa. And the bear ran out and bit the end of his nose off. <laughs> <laughs> and Gabby says, see what I mean, you know? What, you can't argue with that. Goodness. So we had to rush him to the hospital and sew his nose back on. Oh. Accidents do happen. <laughs> He's thinking, but that's a joke about it. <laughs> Another story from uh, Roy is coming up, but uh, I'm wondering now, have you ever heard of a country music singer by the name of Garth Brooks? Well, I think he's coming back for some shows in Alberta soon. Anyhow, this is the guy that shoes his horses, Dan Roberts. I've been looking for something that's missing in our world, and I wonder if my search is all in vain Where's the good guys? Where's the bad guys? Where is law and justice gone? Lord, how I miss John Wayne All alone in the saddle with guns blazing in each hand With true grit in his teeth he held the reins He charged hard into battle Where a lesser man he would have run Lord, how I miss John Wayne He never backed down from a job that he had to do And he could cross the line from talking with a clenched fist attitude He knew right was right and wrong was wrong But today they seem the same John Wayne Well, I never thought I'd see the day But it's time come and gone and now a man's man he's looked upon with shame what we're needing in this world today is men with the guts to back up what they say Lord how I miss John Wayne He never backed down from a job that he had to do And he could cross the line from talking with a clenched fist attitude He knew right was right and wrong was wrong But today they seem the same John Wayne Well, there have been a lot of cowboys who have come and gone Men like Gene Autry, Roy Rogers, Johnny Mac Brown, Tex Ritter Bob Wills and his Texas Playboys Jimmy Stewart, Bob Nolan, Cisco Kidd Tom Mix, Buck Jones Old Walter Brennan, Bob Steele Ray Reed, Bob Crosby Hopalong Cassidy, Gabby Hayes, Ben Johnson, 
course old Louis L'Amour. They're all cowboy heroes, and in many ways, they're the same. But Lord, how I miss John Wayne. I like that one, too, from Dan Roberts. It was June 22nd, 1983, when Roy Rogers was around 71 years old and really doing well, when he was a guest on Late Night with David Letterman. <laughs> Letterman seemed just like a kid back then, and they talked about how when Roy and the Sons of the Pioneers were doing shows all over, mostly just for exposure and not being paid, at times they got pretty hungry. We got to Roswell, New Mexico, and it was in June, about this time of the year, in 1933. And uh, uh, we, out of money, didn't have a dime. And we went to this little motel and told them our story, and we were playing the, the theater there, the local theater, in a week or so. And we went on the local radio station, and we, I asked the man if he had a little 22 or something I could borrow. We liked to hunt, you know? <laughs> didn't want to tell him we were hungry, so uh, he let me have his little rifle, and we'd go out in the evening and get us a couple of jackrabbits and bring them in and fry them in our motel. When and you... we started kidding one another over the air what we like to eat, <laughs> and people started bringing us chicken, fried chicken. Oh, that's and great. I liked uh, uh, banana... Uh, lemon cream pies yeah. and one day I got a call if I would sing the Swiss yodel uh, uh, they would have us two big beautiful lemon meringue pies at our motel that night well I sang I sang uh, the song <laughs> as best I knew how and that evening sure enough here come a young lady and her her mother over with two of the most beautiful lemon pies they were about that thick and we couldn't wait for them to leave so we could inhale those things <laughs> because it was really hungry out and uh, the lady, young lady that brought my uh, the pies over, turned out to be my first wife. Who uh, uh, I have two children by her, and she unfortunately passed away three days after my boy was born. Yeah. This Dusty was born, yeah. and then later on, Dale and I got married. But that's the the story of our trip. Except there's a lot of it. Still to come, director William Whitney and memories of Trigger on the movie set. And next, it's Baxter Black and the great cement pour cowboy style when the spirit of the west continues right after this howdy friends this is baxter black on spirit of the west with hugh mclennan with a little peek at the cement pour if your group or association is planning a meeting and are on a thrifty budget, check out Virtual Video Baxter. That's me. I'll video a personalized welcome, then furnish several humorous stories to run between your speakers. Sign books can be used as auction items. We've done rodeos, museums, bowl sales, the conservation service. Use your imagination. Virtual Video Baxter. Give us a call, 800-654-2550 at baxterblack.com. Have you seen Mauna Loa? I asked Will. No, he replied, as a foot-high wall of concrete began covering his boot toes. It's a volcano in Hawaii, I explained. See, we built a form. It looked good. I mean, it really looked good. This form was to be for a freestanding stem wall, 4 by 2 by 16 feet, thus 4.7, cubic yards. It was plumbed, braced, and photographed for the archives. 7 a.m. on the dot, the giant concrete truck rumbled in. The driver backed up to the spot and swung his long chute out over the open top of our form. It looked like the dull ovipositor on a gargantuan wasp squatting over a tarantula's hole. In retrospect, I realized the driver probably had seen cowboy projects before and anticipated excitement. Are you ready? He asked gleefully. Let her rip, I said, like a man in front of a firing squad. Standing next to a cement mixer truck as tons of gravelly concrete roll down the chute can rattle your brain. As the cement reached the two-foot level, the sides of the form began to bulge. We'll ask, do you have any cardboard? An interesting question, I remember thinking. Something General Custer might have asked as the Indians closed in on him. We tried to stem the bulge by driving stakes in the ground, but the gray mass simply wedged its shoulders under the form 
and lifted it off the ground. Stop! The churning mixer stopped. Another 900 pounds of concrete clattered into the form. A tide of lava surged from underneath and rolled the length of two shovel handles before it sludged to a stop at Will's feet. Mauna Loa? he repeated. Never seen it. Well, I said, now you don't have to. This is Baxter Black on Spirit of the West with Hugh McLennan. Thanks for listening. The Rangeland News is next, and you know when you talk about cowboy heroes, this guy is one in real life. This summer, he's riding a big community pasture looking after a lot of cattle all by himself. He's an amazing ranch rodeo bronc rider and a fine songwriter and singer. Yeah, this is Matt Robertson. It's been a while since we sat down after all this time running around. Talked about good old days, me and you part, we've come a long way. Saturday night, we tie one on, never got in a fight, just had good fun. Shared each other's pleasure and pain, riding and roping and praying for rain. We can pray for rain. This lightning streak, the gray skies, we prayed, Lord. Don't let our dreams burn to the ground. Lift us up. Saddlebag, laying in the shade of your hobbled nag. This life ain't about your personal gain. It's riding and roping and a praying for rain. This cowboy life is it for me. There is no other that is so free. The cows are chase and bronx are tame. Riding and roping and a praying for rain. We pray for rain. This lightning streak, the gray skies, we pray. A roundup of news and coming events from around the West. At the top of page one, it says wildfires and the lack of rain may distort calf prices this fall across the West. And Gary Crawford looks at how it's affecting the U.S. northern plains. The drought in the northern plains is making life not so pleasant for cattle producers with little or no forage to feed their animals, but for consumers, it could bring on some lower beef prices toward the end of this year and into next. With pastures dried up, many northern plains cattle producers are having to sell off more than the usual number of their animals to feedlots. Feedlots take cattle, feed them grain, sell them to meat processors. Agriculture Department livestock analyst Shale Shagham says in a few months when beef from this surge of cattle hits the stores. We do expect with increased supplies of beef to have downward pressure on retail beef prices and we would expect to see in 2017 the the CPI for beef to probably decline around 2%. This would be two years in a row now that the consumer price index for beef will have declined. Last year retail beef prices fell over 6%. Gary Crawford for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Washington. 
Japan has hiked tariffs on frozen beef imports from Canada, the U.S., and other countries. The tariff rises to 50% from 38.5 until next March. It's the first time it's been triggered since 2003 when it applied to chilled beef. An increase is automatic if quarterly imports of specific beef products, both from all nations and those lacking economic partnership agreements with Japan, rise more than 17% from a year earlier. In April to June, Japan's first fiscal quarter frozen beef imports from all nations were up 17.1% on the year, while imports from non-EPA nations uh, were up nearly a quarter. And nations that have those agreements with Japan, such as Australia, Mexico, and Chile, escaped the tariff hike. Canada sold $45 million worth of frozen boneless beef in 2016 to Japan, it also sold $16 million worth of frozen offal and tongues. Hmm. I think the last time I ate chilled beef was when we wound up at a sushi place in Vancouver. A Prince Edward Island farmer's cattle herd was hit by lightning so powerful it killed 10 and knocked several over a fence. The report says six cows and four calves died on the Blair Henry farm. The violent windstorm went through his farm at Vernon Bridge, and when Henry went out the following morning, he saw the devastation. He said the storm was so potent it appears to have tossed some of the animals over and on top of the fence. He said most of the dead cattle were close to the fence under a stand of trees, but that one was laying about 25 meters away in the middle of a field. He says the scene was like a war zone. A California butcher shop has caved in to the demands of a vegan animal rights group to hang a sign on the storefront that says, Animals have the right to live. The animal rights group Direct Action Everywhere held protests in front of the local butcher shop in Berkeley, California for four months. And the Washington Post reports that protest protesters would be dripping with fake blood, tightly bound in plastic wrap as if they were cuts of meat, singing, shouting, and lecturing customers. The vegan protesters sent a list of demands to the shop, including that the shop hang a sign in their window. And the sign says, Attention! Animal lives are their right. Killing them is violent and unjust no matter how it's done. Well, a gray wolf will continue to be protected by the U.S. Endangered Species Act. The U.S. Court of Appeals in Washington maintained a ruling by a lower court that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service does not have the power to delist the species from the federal endangered species list. In 2011, uh, they delisted gray wolves in the Great Lakes region that is composed primarily of Minnesota, Michigan, and Wisconsin, while including parts of Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, North, and South Dakota. The gray wolf had been delisted in that area because population had increased to an estimated count of 3,765 wolves. Well, the summer's wildfires have resulted in some sale dates being changed at the BC Livestock Co-op Yards. You can get the latest information at their website, bclivestock.bc.ca. And uh, BC Livestock Kamloops uh, has space available as they have all summer for cattle and horses who require housing during the fires. You can contact Cheryl at the yard to make arrangements, 250-573-3939. Meanwhile, there are regular cattle sales every Wednesday and two horse sales a month at the Innisfail Auction Market. And if you're bringing in yearlings for sale off grass, you can uh, book them ahead of time by calling 1-800-710-3166. And that takes us down to the final item. And uh, you know, I will never wear gumboots when I'm working around horses after last week. <laughs> Just as I was turning her loose. Lucky. A good old buckskin mare stepped on my left foot, and I was wearing gumboots. She put all her weight on my big toe, and it ripped the toenail up from the back, and man, did it hurt. Well, after Billy looked at it, she said, just make sure you don't get infection in there. Well, how will I know that, I said, and she says, well, if your leg starts to go numb, you'll know it's infected. Anyway, the next day, we were at a crowded restaurant in town for lunch, and I started thinking about this, so I started pinching and... Oh, no, I couldn't feel a thing. I turned to Billy and I said, I think my leg's infected. I just pinched it and I can't feel anything. And then the lady right next to me on the other side of me said, Well, no wonder. It's my leg you're pinching. 
And that's the Rangeland News. Coming up on the Urban Saddles and Western Wear Horse Training File, why can one rider have trouble getting a horse to respond and another rider take that same horse and get along just great? That's next when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. I uh, look at why a horse that seems to handle just fine for one rider seems like a different horse when somebody else gets on him on the Urban Saddles and Western Wear Horse Training Pile coming right up after Jim Reeder and the bar. Ring. I will ride to that ranch in the sky Whenever the boss says it's time I will tack up my horse and be gone There's a place where old cowpokes belong Where the grass is a plenty And my glass is never empty I'll be ready when I get called From my saddle I will travel down a trail no trouble where the wind will carry me home and I'll be united with the cowboys of the ranges they'll be sagebrush in an old wooden gate that says welcome home to the bar The 17th annual Spirit of the West Cruise will be something unforgettable. My wife Billy and I will be hosting a big group of ranchers, farmers, horse and cattle folks, and Spirit of the West listeners for a trip I know many of you have had on your bucket list for a long time. September 16th, 2018, we will sail out of Quebec City and cruise Canada's maritime provinces in all the glory of the fall colors, including stops in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island, Sydney and Halifax, Nova Scotia, St. John, New Brunswick and the Bay of Fundy, Bar Harbor, Maine, Boston, Portland, Maine and Cape Liberty, New Jersey, with an optional stay in New York City. Now, just for the Spirit of the West group, we have a tour of a cattle operation in Nova Scotia. We'll have all our great Western music concerts and sing-alongs, and we'll be swapping lots of ranching stories. And we'll have a lot of special activities just for our group. You'll find more details on the cruise section of our website at hugh mclennancom and on our cruise Facebook page, and you can always call the toll-free number 1-800-530-0131. Now it's time for the horse training file, brought to you by Irvine Tack and Western Wear, Canada's largest Western store. 
Suit up for summer at Urban Tack and Western Wear. <laughs> no, I'm not talking boots for the beach, although that would be interesting. I'm talking real summer stuff like sunglasses, sandals, and flip-flops, toys for the kids for those long summer road trips. You'll be surprised what you'll find at Urban's. Jewelry, purses, dishes, collectibles. Hey, all I can say is it's a whole lot of fun. Shopping Urban Tack and Western Wear off exit 305, Highway 2 by Crossfield, open seven days a week. Why can one rider have trouble getting a horse to respond and another rider take that same horse and get along great? Well, here's what Martin Black says. We may be familiar with the influence of feel and timing, but something that could be quicker for the rider to learn is the effect of the rain or the reins in different positions. Now, I like to say that most concepts in horsemanship, it's much more complicated than people think. The type of bitter hackamore obviously makes a difference, but not nearly as much as the rider's hands, timing, and pressure. Years ago, I was riding a nice Tennessee Walker mare for a customer, and I thought she was doing pretty well. Uh, the horse, I mean. I'd only used an O-ring snaffle bit with her, and when the owner came up to our place to try her out, she got on, and I asked her to give the horse some vertical flexion. She was wearing leather gloves, uh, the owner, not the horse, and she started giving the reins repeated firm tugs, and the mare's head went progressively higher with each yank. And then I asked my wife Billy to get on her, and with soft pressure and release, the mare immediately broke at the pole and dropped her head in a perfect vertical flex. So that shows how important it is for the rider to feel the horse so the horse can feel back to the rider. Martin Black also says, Experimenting with the following rein positions can potentially give you completely different results. Try pulling one rein to your hip or pulling straight out from the horse's shoulder in front of the saddle, lifting the rein against the wither or with a short rein lifting and pushing against the jaw. All this is done with one rein, different lengths, different directions and different amounts of pressure to get totally different responses. So that has a lot to do with uh, why a horse works one way for one person and a different way for another one. And for Irvin Saddles and Western Wear, that's the horse training file. Something everyone can do is uh, give your horse that daily feeding of Hoffman's Horse Ration like we do. You can find out more at hoffmanshorseration.com. In the credits of a good old Western movie roll across the screen, we don't usually pay much attention to who the director was, but when you dig into it a little further, sometimes you find out how much the director actually had to do with the success of the movie and the stars. William Whitney directed 27 Roy Rogers movies for Republic from 1946 to 51, and Whitney was a lifelong horseman himself, and a good one. And he has been referred to as the greatest director of all when it comes to working with animals. One writer said, when it comes to working with animals, the greatness might be because he was working with Trigger, the greatest animal actor who ever was. And this is the voice of director William Whitney. Well, I love horses to start with. I love animals. I raise dogs. Uh, I've got a little book out called Trigger Remembered that'll make you cry. It's all true. I love that old horse. Just more probably than Roy said once on an audience, he said, well, there's only one person that loved Trigger as much as I loved him, and that's Billy. Uh, Dale and I in the morning used to watch him when they, Glenn Randall took him out of the trainer, took him out of the dock, and they put a, put a set of uh, hobbles around him. And he was a stallion, but very quiet. And uh, he'd watch Glenn walk away, and then he'd test to see whether he just laid the laid them around or actually buckled them. And if they weren't if they weren't tied on, he would inch his way to the other horses. Never make a sound, a whinny, nothing. And I always used Dale and I of having a cup of coffee, Dale Evans, we'd watch him and laugh. He uh, uh, he, he he made our day, literally. He had a personality and I and I remember once I wanted Joe to come out run over the backs of about eight horses and jump to Trigger. And old Trigger, when things got quiet, he'd start to look around. You know, he'd say, now what are these guys dreaming up? So <laughs> we, I said, everybody keep talking and keep doing, and we were banging on the tin and pounding on a brass, and he was sound asleep, and I rolled the camera, and we put a big Barney so because he could hear the camera run. You can't, but he could put a big Barney over the camera and I go like this to Joe. Joe comes out 
runs over these eight horses, leaps to Trigger. There'll never be another mount like that. And Trigger woke up like this, and Joe took off with him, and the old horse came back, and we put him in the same thing, and he sulked. Put his head down on the ground and sulked. He'd been tricked. <laughs> he said, but he was something else. I, I still think about him. Well, we're going to wrap this segment up with a song uh, that has some yodeling in it. And old Rex Allen, a superb yodeler himself, used to say, put yodeling on a record and they'll never play it on the radio. Do it on stage and you get a standing ovation. But see what you think of the yodel in Cowboy Lullaby from Kevin McNevin. As I sit rocking the baby I dreamed of the yesteryear Of the cold roundup weather Branding the volley steer A cowpuncher's life so carefree I've lived for many a year Those far away scenes Bring memories and dreams While my baby smiles through his fears Rocking, rocking, hush by Go to sleep, my baby love Angel Your tiny hands bind tight my heart You're the fulfillment of my dreams
Next, we'll look at a classic song of the West and the story behind the song, and then the Cowboy Poetry Spotlight when the Spirit of the West continues right after this. Welcome back to the Spirit of the West. This week's classic song of the West dates back to at least 1890. Jack Thorpe published the song under the title Educated Feller in about 1908, and two years later, John Lomax published a substantially longer version of it in Cowboy Songs and Other Frontier Ballads, that book sitting right here on my shelf. The singing cowboy Jules Verne Allen was the first to record it in 1928. And J. Frank Doby wrote, John Custer, trail driver, told me that while he was on the Z. Barrel Ranch north of Big Spring in 1880, a slim fellow wearing a little hat, not looking anything like a cowboy, came into camp and asked for a job and was given an outlaw to ride, one of the Z. Bar L horses, and he rode him to a ferry well. And that's how the song started. So whatever the exact origins were, uh, the J-38 Land and Cattle Company take us back to what it might have been like as the inspiration for the zebra done. Hey. Who's that coming over there? I, I ain't never seen him before. What's he doing walking way out here? He's either way out ahead or way behind one of the two. We was camped at the bend at the head of the Cimarron. Up comes a stranger, he stops to argue some. He looked so very foolish, we began to look around. We thought he was Greenhorn, just escaped from town. Such an educated feller, boys, his thoughts just came in herds. In each and every sentence, boys, with ten jaw-breaking words. He just keeps on a-talking, till he makes us all damn sick. So we began to look around, just how to play a trick. He said he lost his job out on the Santa Fe. He's headed across the prairie for to catch the old Jeff D. He wouldn't tell us why some trouble with the boss. Asked if he could borrow a nice fat saddle horse. Well, this tickled all the boys to death. They laughed right up their sleeves. Yes, we can lend you a fine horse as fresh and fat as you please. Shorty grabbed a lariat and he roped old Zebra Dunn. And all the boys gathered round and waited for the fun. And old Dunn, he was an outlaw, he'd grown so very wild. He could plow the moon down, boys, he could jump a mile. Dunny stood stock still as if he did not know until he was saddled and ready for the go. When the stranger hit the saddle, now old Dunn, he quit the earth. He traveled right straight upwards for all he was worth. Wailing and a-squealing and having wall-eyed fits. His hind feet perpendicular and his front feet in the bits. Well, he thumped him on the shoulders and he spurred him when he whirled. He hollered to the punchers, I'm the wolf of the world. When he was dismounted once more upon the ground, we know he was a thoroughbred without a gent from town. Now the boss who was standing by watching of this show, he walks up to the stranger and he says, you need not go. If you can toss a lariat like you rode old Zebra done, you're the man I've been looking for since the year of one. Now it's one fine thing and a sure thing I've learned since I was born. Not every educated feller is a plum green horn. The Cowboy Poetry Spotlight this week focuses on another great talent that's ridden across the Great Divide, Clay Geralds. Today we climb the high uphill overlooking a valley where I live. Sitting up there where the clouds flow, just me and my horse 
I call old Joe. We sit there puffing after that climb and listening to the wind blowing through the pines. And I said, Joe, do you reckon that we're getting old? Climbing that hill sure was slow. But now wait a minute, that can't be so. Why, it was just yesterday we were out on the go. Off every weekend to some rodeo. We could catch a steer in six seconds flat. But the last time out took a lot longer than that. We made the whole arena and halfway back. And I know I spurred you pretty hard that day. But that old steer was just fast and we got out late. But some folks see a change in us, it seems. Cause just the other night, my wife said to me, you ought to slow down and stay home more, you see. Well, what does she think? That we're getting old? It's just the weather that's making us slow. But you know, Joe, I can't say much. That woman spent a lifetime loving me a bunch. Sitting home waiting while we were out there making another rodeo at some county fair. Sometimes she'd wait up till the wee hours of morning just to see the headlights and know that we were coming. But Joe, I never thought about us getting old. It just sneaks up on you like a soft winter snow. But we ain't over. We just gotta get in shape. Come spring, there'll be another rodeo to make. But if something did happen, then we don't get started. It's all right, old friend. It's been a hell of a party. Well, thank you so much for making the ride this week, and I sure hope you can join us right here next week at the same time. Thanks again to our great support crew, Mark and Kathy. That's Mark and Kathy McMillan at Meadow Springs Guest Ranch. And if you're looking for tractor parts, doesn't matter what year or what make, Mark might be able to have it for you. He's got a great website called bctractorparts.com. If you enjoy this program, I think you'll really enjoy Canadian Cowboy Country Magazine. You can subscribe online at uh, cowboycountrymagazine.com or give them a call at 1-800-943-7336. Till next week, I'm Hugh McLennan. Hope to see you down the trail somewhere real soon.